This is classroom number one. It's our typical digital classroom here. Pretty neat, right? Let me show you classroom number two. All right, guys, here's classroom number two. It's my dirty old office here, but I've got it set up to where I can do virtual teaching in here too. It's another neat place to learn how to go scuba diving. Let's go take a walk and let's look at classroom number three. All right, guys, we're in classroom number three now. It's my truck. You've been, seen plenty of videos with me in here. Yes, I even teach scuba inside this truck on dive trips. But this ain't the last classroom. Let me show you classroom number four. All right, guys, classroom number four. It's our workshop. You guys have been in here plenty of times with us in videos, and we teach a lot of classes in here. We teach a lot of equipment techniques courses, things where we're messing with equipment. It's classroom number four for us. That being said, let me show you our fifth classroom. So here we go, guys. This is our fifth classroom. Yep, I am outside. I'm out here on our main dock. We've got a picnic area set up here for our divers to come out and learn on if they want to. And that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video, how divers learn today in 2024. We're going to look at the three methodologies of how we teach, and I'm going to explain why we teach the way we do. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now once again, I'm back here in our classroom and I'm trying to get it set up for an open water student tonight. And so I've got my board up going, I've got my uh, digital screen, I've got some dry suits here I've gotta get rid of. We were actually teaching a dry suit course just the other night and I've even got a map drawn up here on the board because I was doing a navigation class out here in the lake the other day day but this is our typical classroom where a, the majority of our students come to learn and in today's video we're actually going to look at the three different methodologies that we use here at Lake Hickory Scuba to teach but we're also going to talk about different teaching environments because of how people learn differently as well. So not only do we teach here in a classroom, we teach virtually as well. So we can do it through a Zoom meeting or a, a Meets meeting or something of that sort online. I've taught through Skype before. I've even taught courses over the phone to people where I can verbalize what the information that they need to learn. I've even taught classes in my truck before where I've traveled to go on a trip, me and the students are in there together and we're discussing their course. So we're gonna look at the three different methodologies that we use to teach here at Lake Hickory Scuba and then hopefully this will help you guys in the future understand why instructors do what they do. All right, so let me briefly go over the three different types of methodologies that we use to teach scuba, and then I'll show you how you can use those methodologies based off the teaching environment that you find yourself in. So the first, of course, is lecture-based. I'm actually sitting here behind the podium. I've got my students out in front of me. I've got a screen or a board that I can write on, and I'm just doing a lecture-based style of learning. It's an old-school method, but it still works. And it also works great if you have that student who needs that one-on-one -on -one attention between them and the student, Now, or say them and the instructor. Now, the second way that we do it, of course, is prescriptive learning. Prescriptive learning is pretty simple to understand. The students are learning on their own. They're at home, they're going through the manuals or the digital kits, they're answering the questions in the quizzes, and then when they come into the classroom, the instructor is going to go through the quiz, find out what the student knows, what the student doesn't, and then he can cater to that student or set his lecture-based learning to just the questions that that student missed. There's really no reason to teach a student something they already know. It's better to teach them what they don't know. And then, of course, the last is active learning. Active learning is a great way to teach because it's more practically centered or practically based for the student. If we're going over a topic, say, I don't know, Archimedes Principle, then we can do an active learning session and we can pick out the pieces of equipment that that's going to affect, say, a student's buoyancy when we're in the water, and we can put it on them. We can show them how to inflate and deflate and how weights are affected and how they affect your trim. And that's more of an active learning session. So let's take a quick look at each of the learning environments and we'll see how each methodology is actually going to work for us. So if I'm here in the classroom, of course, I'm probably just going to be doing lecture-based learning. I've got plenty of training aids here. I've got a board that I can write on. I got my digital screen up that I can put the slides or pictures and videos up and things like that. But this is a great setting for, say, lecture-based learning. It's also a great setting, of course, for active learning. Just the other night, I was teaching a dry suit course and I was able to lay out all the different dry suits. So instead of just showing pictures of dry suits and explain it, we were able to let the students put each dry suit on and see 
how they actually worked. And that was the active learning session that we were doing during that class. So the classroom is a great way for a, an instructor to teach a lecture base or even an active learning session. Now in an environment such as say an office setting, this is my office here. I know it's pretty nasty in here today, but you know, I've got multiple screens set up here because we can do virtual learning in here. And since 2020, the pandemic of 2020, we've been doing a ton of virtual teaching. This is where we can teach students from all over the world. And think about YouTube for a second. YouTube is a great virtual learning environment because you guys learn from us. We learn from you. We watch videos and things like that. Well, this is another great place for lecture-based learning because I can set up, say, a virtual meeting here on the computer and I can talk to students from all over the world. I can share slides, I can share videos, we can do practical applications together. Even say if we was doing a computer class, I can show my computer on the screen while they're holding their computer at home and we can learn about them together. I can show them how to service gear, how to change a mass strap, anything of that sort. So the virtual learning sessions, these are great not only for active learning sessions, they're also great for say uh, the uh, lecture based learning as well. Now that we're back in the truck, I know a lot of people are going to think it's crazy that I teach scuba while I'm driving down the road, and they're probably going to say it's not safe. Well, actually, it's very safe. If you've ever been driving down the road, having a conversation with somebody, well, teaching, say, a prescriptive learning session, if you will, is really no different than just talking to somebody. As I'm driving down the road, if I've got, say, customers, clients, or even students with me on a trip, as they're sitting here in the seats and they're reading through the digital material on their own, if they come across information that they don't understand, they can actually ask me a question and we can have a legitimate conversation about that. So in an environment like this, such as my vehicle, it's a great way for prescriptive learning or prescriptive teaching to take place. So now if my environment is say a workroom, this is another great place to do active learning sessions. And we do active learning sessions in here all the time. If we're doing a class such as say equipment techniques or a tank visual inspection course or something of that sort, we can bring them back in here. We've got tools to work with and they can learn from an active learning standpoint. It's actually the students getting their hands dirty and getting in there, getting in the nit and gritty and learning how to operate certain things. It's not really a good environment say for prescriptive learning or even lecture-based learning, but an environment like this is great for an active learning session. And then of course we're right back outside and this is a great environment for active learning sessions as well. You know in the scuba industry we can teach in all different types of environments. I teach in the classroom. I love teaching outside especially out here on the dock. I got plenty of room out here. I can spread out dive gear. We can do lecture based. We can do prescriptive learning. We can do active learning. Uh, we can even do it on the side of a pool. I can do it on a boat. But getting students out of the classroom, putting them out in nature, they get fresh air, they get the sun on their face, and they really get to enjoy learning how to scuba dive and sometimes doing it in an environment like this it makes more sense to them when we're in a classroom we're talking about things floating and sinking and stuff like that well out here we can actually do active learning sessions i can actually put stuff down in the water and teach them about positive buoyancy negative buoyancy neutral buoyancy all different types of things we can even show them in an active learning session what is going to be the appropriate exposure protection based on the temperature of the water. So I can bring a three mil, I can bring a seven mil, I can bring a dry suit out here. I can have the students put it on and literally jump in and they can see how that neoprene or that shell-based dry suit is going to protect them and keep them warm in the water. So environments like this are a great environment to do what's called active learning sessions. So there you go guys, that's the three different ways that we teach the academic lessons in scuba diving or and this can apply to any industry. It doesn't just have to be the scuba industry. But let me know down in the comment section below, how did you learn your scuba course? Was it lecture based? Did you have the instructor standing up front of the class or was it prescriptive learning? Did he sell you a book and you went home and studied on your own then came in and take a test? Or was it active learning? Did you and your students or fellow students actually discuss the topics in the class or did he do that at the pool work? Did they bring out the equipment for you to try on? Did they show you certain things in the classroom and make it fun for you? Or what was the environment? Was you in a classroom? Was you going down the road? Was you at home in your bed? Was you out on the docks? Where did you learn? Let me know down in the comment section below because I'd really like to know. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share. If you got any questions on how scuba courses are conducted, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer. But that's going to do it for today. Take care. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.